Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here with designer Jay Treat looking at Arrive by WizKids at Gen Con 2018, a game we originally had scheduled to be demoed in the BGG booth until Scott from WizKids told us that's not possible. So we had to, we had to, we have to come see you. <laughs> Why yeah, do we have to do that? This is a special game. Uh, you don't play Arrive on a table. You play it on the floor. Okay. Uh, so this is, is there a particular reason for that? Like, why would we do that? <laughs> great question. Uh, half of the players in this game are going to be great old ones, Cthulhu, Haster, uh, those, those kinds of creepy deities, mm -hmm. uh, who are going to be literally ri arriving over Arkham. So as you can see, this is uh, a smaller uh, portion of the town of Arkham, with many of the places that you will recognize. And uh, some of the players will be literally like placing their hands and feet on different locations on the board, corrupting those locations okay. uh, in the uh, in the intent of completing a sigil. So uh, players will play in teams of two. One player will be the great old one, and the other player will be their cultist. The cultist doesn't have to uh, stretch or do anything on the board. Instead, they're going to be looking at one of these sigil cards, and they're going to be giving their great old one uh, hints about where they should move or and how they should move in Arkham in order to uh, corrupt the places located uh, indicated by their card. Um, the cultist can rotate the card however they want, and so if they rotate it like this, then they want uh, the hospital to be corrupted, the lighthouse to be corrupted, uh, the boarding house, Arkham Asylum, and the lodge. Okay. Uh, and if they can do that, uh, if they can get any combination of great old ones to corrupt those locations, then they will score that sigil. And when you, when a team scores three sigils, they win the game. They've summoned their great old one into the mortal realm to consume it or whatever it does. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yes, effects undetermined. Right, we did that. Uh, so how do we give commands? Like, what's the actual nature of play? Right, that's a very good question. So uh, before a cultist will make a specific suggestion to their great old one, they need to address them properly. Okay. So uh, you can make up your own honorific or your own true name. Uh, and if you're having trouble doing that, every card has four suggestions. So this one says, you know, that which confounds mortal minds or oh great and terrible one. And there are a ton of those suggestions on, uh, among these cards. Okay. Um, and once you've got your great old one's attention, you can say, you know, put your, uh, put your top right tentacle on the police station. Or you can just say, you know, put your left hand on, uh, you know, the gray eye space. Um, it's up to the great old one what they actually do. They don't have to follow what the cultist tells them to, but it's usually to their benefit, too. Okay. All right. Uh, so we're not competing simultaneously as teams against one another? So it, it, is, it is teams. So you will play either two teams or three teams of two players, a cultist and a great old one, against each other. Okay. And one of those teams will, will come out triumphant. Um, there, are, uh, there are two primary modes of play, uh, either completely turn-based where it's just, you know, I, I say what I want my uh, great old one to do and they, they do it, and then, and then you say... Uh, and then there's also chaos mode, where you just play as fast as you want. Okay. Um, and, and one of those is a little more strategic than the other, and one of them requires uh, a little less physical endurance on the great old one's part. Okay. Um, there, are, there are also special powers, so every team is going to choose one of the eight great old ones. Uh, here I've got Cthulhu and Haster. Uh, and they're also going to have their choice between uh, two different powers. So Cthulhu is both cunning and eldritch. So the team can choose either of those powers. Uh, the, the powers in the game are intentionally made uh, in three groups. There are powers that make it easier for players to play on this board. If you don't have the, the twisting ability of everyone else, then uh, you know, there, there are some powers that say you can't actually fall. You can rest your body parts, you can do things that make it easier for you. Uh, there are some that let you show off. So for example, uh, Cthulhu's cunning power says you may use your head as a fifth appendage. Uh, it, it's tricky to do that, but it's very powerful because you know you've got to get five sigils, and so with that mode, you don't actually need uh, the other great old ones to complete your sigil. Right. And then there are just silly ones. Let me see. Is is uh, so uh, one of the one of the powers is that uh, everything that the cultists say to their uh, great old one has to rhyme. 
um, okay. which which makes that a little bit trickier. Um, but it's it's really fun. So so the game is short, the game is silly, uh, and it's it's just fun. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jay, for the overview. All right. Very nice.